thankful I am thankful that we have extreme clarity on who is a traitor and who is a patriot. And I know people are upset at me for saying that. Oh, come on. Uh, You're such a Republican promoting the Republican line. I got that a lot yesterday. No, that has nothing to do with it. I do not think all Democrats are a traitor. I don't think all Republicans are a traitor. I think some Republicans are a traitor, and I think a lot of Democrats are a traitor. But it has nothing to do with who you voted for, although I do think it's evil to vote for a Democrat. I don't think it makes you a traitor. You can be sinning and not be a traitor at the same time. But the election integrity has been revealed to us now clearly. It's broken. And there is no remedy for us through government means, which may be what God is trying to do to us all along is to understand that this false idol that so many Americans have, the government, is not our remedy. And there is no way to save us from the government through the government I just realized I have a dirty dish behind me. <laughs> Apologize for that. Well, welcome to How to Build a Tent with Dirty Dishes behind me. My name is Matt Williams. Thank you for listening to the show, even on a day like this. It's sobering. It feels discouraging. But we are not allowed to grow weary as Christians, my friends. We're part of the Fight, Laugh, Feast Network. Go over to flfnetwork.com. Put an HGBT in a memo field. You'll get a sweet mug like the one behind me. you get tons of other great benefits be helping proclaim the lordship of jesus in every area of life for when we get censored we will you will be helping us build our platform before we get kicked off so we have a place to go and you can hear our content and you can be encouraged and blessed by it like i hope you are with the show speaking of donald trump got removed from twitter last night tweets were deleted even though he was calling for peaceful protests the whole time he never called for violence once even though the media is portraying it differently a video where he told people to go home peacefully got removed and blocked for inciting violence figure that facebook blocked him for 24 hours i i have to say this guys i don't have any more hope for us in the government in the sphere of government and i'm getting a lot of questions so what do we do And I want to try to give some things that I'm thinking about right now. Obviously, this is the night after we've been betrayed by Pence and a lot of our Republicans. Um, I'm not saying we've been betrayed by the Democrats. The Democrats are going to be Democrats. But anyone who pretended to be for the people on the Republican side has betrayed us tonight. And the truth is probably they betrayed us a long time ago. And we're just having it revealed 2020. And now the early part of 2021 has been the great revealing of so many things for us as Christians. And I think it's been good and healthy, even though it's painful and gut-wrenching at times. But God often does that before he brings back redemption, before he brings back um, reformation, uh, revival. He separates the wheat from the chaff. And that's probably what's happening here. And I just want to reiterate this. I still firmly believe this, that this country and this government, because Trump is not going to be reelected, I believe, unless something crazy happens. And no, I don't think this protest storming the Capitol was crazy at all. There's a lot of evidence that I've seen where a lot of Antifa was involved starting the riots. I'm sure there were a lot of um, angry people supporting Trump that got involved too and maybe broke windows or whatnot, but not a lot was vandalized. If you look, the only person that was killed was an unarmed four tour U S air force veteran who was shot unarmed by the police. She bled out from the neck. So nothing compared to DC being on fire in May. Nothing compared to the Antifa riots all around the country, even though it's strange that Antifa wasn't there because, in fact, they most likely were penetrating and infiltrating the crowd and inciting the violence. And I becomes even more suspect by how well and eloquent the speeches were of the senators afterwards condemning the violence and how there was even 
calls for Trump using the 25th Amendment to be removed from office now. And the statement or the letter was dated yesterday, the day before uh, the 6th. It was January 5th. So anyways, this is what I think is going to happen because I think Biden is going to be elected. And I'm sure Kamala Harris is going to take over soon after. I think turnout in Republican elections are gone. I don't think anyone's going to support the Republican Party anymore. And I'm, perhaps another party comes around, but the Republican Party will still exist in some form and it will split the party like we see in elections where there were three candidates for the president and for the Senate and Democrats. And it's not going to look good. And even if it does look good, now they have been emboldened to cheat. And we saw this with the runoffs. They played and did the same exact things in the runoffs. When everyone, I remember hearing this, that they're not going to cheat. They're not going to do the same tricks because everyone is focused on Georgia specifically in the runoff. Well, turns out they did. They caught on camera votes being removed from Purdue. They stopped counting in the middle of the night. They had massive dumps that favored the Democrats. And there were people counting without observers nearby. What didn't they do that they did in the election for the presidency? I think it'll be hard pressed to find anything that they did differently. And now there's no punishment. There's no recourse. The government is lost. And in fact, it's probably been lost for a long time. But now it's just become so blatant because Trump actually had the gumption to challenge it and to fight back. It became revealed. And so elections are not going to be a vehicle for this country to be restored. And I'm not saying it's over. I'm not saying that God could not turn this country around. Of course he could. But we're not going to be doing it through the government, I believe. Which leaves two other spheres of authority that God has given us. And this is where our people ask me, what should we be doing now? And this is my answer is we need to focus locally, specifically in our local communities. And perhaps maybe even in our government elections, there may be still hope. I doubt it. But perhaps there are ways where we can lo uh, elect local sheriffs and we can elect local mayors to help defend us against the tyranny that's coming our way. But I still think that's kind of a long shot. So Whatever God is doing, we have to remember he's in control and that we are not allowed to grow weary. God says, let us not become weary in doing good for in the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. And that that does not mean only in election season. That does not mean only when the government is for us and not against us. That doesn't mean that it's a promise that we are going to win future elections. That is a promise that says, let us not become weary in doing good because at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. And we know that the harvest, the good gifts that we receive from doing good is not because government recognizes our good deeds, but it is from God. God is the one who gives us good gifts. And so we are not growing weary. We are not allowed to become weary. We must continue to do good, not because then therefore the government will treat us better, but because God has commanded it and because God promises that we will reap the harvest if we do not give up. Our blessings are tied to who God is, not in who our government is. And it, the government is only one sphere of authority that God has given us in life. And even when we have no control over what this fear of authority does. God hasn't put us in a place where we can make an impact. He seems to be taking more and more of that away from us for whatever reason, judgment, for being bad stewards of it, or for just the plan that he has for some other reason. Whatever it is, he's taking that away from us. He's taking away the influence that we have. But he still has given us influence. He has still given us spheres of authority where we must continue to do good. One of them is the family. We must continue 
to love our wives. We must continue to love our children and raise them up in the fear and admonition of the Lord. So what do we do right now? We focus on our families. We focus on being good stewards and preparing them for the future ahead. We focus on raising biblical warriors that are going to fight the spiritual battles, that are going to fight the battles that are going to come, that are going to be able to persevere and look to Christ in all of this. That's an area where we turn to fight when we can't fight in government. I mean, we need to be doing that anyways. But that, we do not get to become derelict in our duties at home because the government has failed us. The next is church. We need to be involved in our church. We need to be working together with our brothers and sisters and investing in the church community and growing the gospel and growing the kingdom of God through making disciples of all nations. We need to be encouraging our pastors, building our elders up. We need to be helping those in our need in our communities. We need to be coming together. We need to be creating a place for refuge. And those things are going to become more meaningful and valuable as the days ahead because I believe that things like more lockdowns are going to come with the Supreme Court abdicating their responsibility, Congress and Senate, the Senate and the House of Representatives in Congress are controlled by the Democrats, Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, Democrats, the the deep state, the executive branch, the agencies are all big government Democrats. We're going to see things like shutdowns again. We're going to continue to see mask mandates. Joe Biden promised 100 days of mask, mandatory masks. We're, we may see mandatory vaccinations. We may see you may not be able to buy or sell without a vaccination. You may not be able to travel without a vaccination. These things are going to hinder us who feel morally obligated to not do those things. And we're going to need a strong family, a strong church that is repentant and looking to Christ for our substance. And looking to Christ to be our all in all. So those are the things that we need to be looking at for now. There may be more things to come in the future. There may be more things for us to talk about and focus on but as of right now tonight the 6th of january that is where we need to look to our local communities to our family and to our church and do not grow weary of being doing good we can have our times of discouragement we can have our times of letdown but we are not allowed to grow in our weariness we are not allowed to stay there because God is still on the throne and he is still doing things. He is still working out all things for good for those who are called according to his purpose. And if you need to repent in your own life, if you need to come back to Christ in your own walk, now is the time. Now is the time more than ever. When you are discouraged, that is the time. When your hope in government has let you down, when your hope in politicians has let you down, this is the time to make sure that Christ is your all in all and nothing else is there. To remove the high places, to remove the idols that have shared the place where Christ demands alone to be worshipped. This is the time to take the government off the seat, to take the government out of the position of God and put Christ back there. Do not grow weary. God is still on the throne. He knew this was going to happen. He is orchestrating this out in the grand scheme for his plans. And don't give up. Don't grow weary. God is good. We'll talk to you tomorrow.